Yo, what is up everybody? In case you're new to this channel, this is the face behind the beautiful voice of these tutorials. Welcome, we're doing something a little bit different than what we've been doing up so far in this series. Basically, as we get into more complex stuff, I'm gonna take a video to basically go over the concepts for a particular thing, and then we'll go hands-on with that concept in the following video. So for example, today we're gonna be talking about arrays. You're gonna get the information needed for arrays, and then we're gonna go through it again in the next video. So it might be slightly redundant, but it's definitely useful for the, those of you who like to get a little bit more context about what you're learning. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys, and if it's not, then just go ahead and skip to the hands-on video. But you're not gonna to wanna to do that because I need that watch time. So be sure to subscribe and watch the entire video. Now before we get started, do check out our sponsor. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so we're gonna be talking about arrays. And basically you can think of an array as a type of collection. What's a collection? It's a group of things. So when you need to put numerous things together in a group, you can use an array. Think about if you needed to store 10 grades for a student's grade report, like their, their report card or whatever, maybe the, the assignment grades they've gotten for a particular class. You might have something like this. You'll have int grade one, int grade two, you'll assign values to these and you have all the way down to grade 10. And as a side note, again, my handwriting is literally the worst as well as my spelling, so just to prepare you guys. <laughs> so why would you not wanna do this? Well, you're gonna end up with 10 variables. And then if you needed to do the same thing for another student, you're gonna have 20 variables total and you're gonna have to keep track of all this information and it's just a giant pile of garbage. You don't wanna do that. Hey, Aaron, hey, Aaron, <whistles> mom, what? do you have any old shirts I can use? Just shirts to wipe off my chalkboard. I can't use an eraser. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just put all of those pieces of data together in one data type? Well, we actually can do that. And it's gonna look something like this. You're going to say int because we're storing integers and you're going to use square brackets. This is how we indicate it's an array. Then we give it a name, so we can say grades. And there we go, we just declared an array. But the thing is, the array also needs a size. So how many elements you can store inside the array. So to do that, instead of ending the semicolon here, you can actually assign a value to it and say new int square brackets and then a size. So that's the syntax to create an array. Usually it's on one line, but I can't fit it, so. Just basically the data type is an integer array. This is the name of the variable and this is what we're assigning it. We're assigning it a new integer array of 10 elements. And that's what the things inside of an array are called, elements. So it's gonna look something like this. So we have one structure with 10 spots in it. Each one of these is known as an element and each one has an index. So this one's gonna have index zero, this one's gonna have index one, two, and so forth. So it starts at zero. So it's a zero based thing, which means the last element here is gonna have index nine. So the last element's index is always going to be one less than the size of the array. In this situation, the size is 10. The last index is going to be nine because it starts at zero. You can get that size of an array using the array name dot length, which is a property. So it's gonna look like this. Grades dot length, no parentheses, just the name. Now you don't use the square brackets when you're referring to the array. You're only going to do that when you're creating the array with the type up here. Sometimes when you're declaring the type, you'll see it as this instead, with the square brackets attached to the variable. Both are legitimate ways of creating the array, but this is the preferred way of doing it, as it clearly says this is an integer array right here versus having to look at the variable name. It's just a preference. If you're coming from C, this might be more comfortable but if you're new to Java, you want to probably do it this way. Then, after this point, when you want to refer to the entire array, you just use the name with no square brackets. 
If you want to access a particular element in the array, that's where you use the square brackets. So I'll show you that in a minute, but just to finish up here, grades.length, this is a type integer. So anywhere that's expecting an integer, you can use grades.length. If you want to access a particular element, it's going to look like this. Grades, square bracket, and then you put the index. So for example, nine. 